Here we are with some more Generation Wrestling with Generation Wrestling 9 and that was a very annoying intro there but I'm not going to restart and start again because I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> uh, the, so unfortunately we dropped one in importance and by the way yeah I just found yeah I read this over again over 11 so we'll need week 12 importance to become a small company. Now this is annoying because we can't afford to do a show uh, twice a month uh, not a show that's worth watching anyway uh, so yeah that's just gonna be unfortunate uh, I'll, I'll do my best to do maybe a cheap show of the now and again twice a month but uh, uh, you know for a second time a month but uh, I, I don't think that we're gonna be able to do a decent show uh, again uh, so yeah that, that's kind of annoying it, it, it's very annoying it's not kind of annoying it's very annoying but uh, Generation Wrestling 9 on YouTube, of course, try and grow that wider audience. I might do Generation Wrestling 10, which will be a big show, I think, anyway. Uh, it'll be big, anyway. Uh, on the local company in British Columbia and see how that is for importance, anyway. So, yeah, seven segments here, of course, uh, 70 minutes. I don't know why I'm talking about that and never talk about that, but... Uh, the main event, Kyle O'Reilly will be taking on Eddie Kingston. Will Kyle O'Reilly successfully defend his Generation Championship? We will see. We also have another Championship match as the tag team titles will be on the line. We will have the grudge match between Sean DeVry and Joe Hendry. Uh, so we'll see who will win that feud there. Um, so yeah, uh, really. Well, then we also have the Brian Cage match as well. But, uh, yep, so we're just going to go ahead and get right into it uh, and run this show. So we start off with a video hyping the match between Sean Defy and Joe Hendry. Uh, it pretty much shows the rivalry and, you know, Sean Defy getting his, you know, first match, uh, f getting his first win with the company. Talking about that first win, he adds to that first win by finally being able to... Uh, get a second one here as he goes over on Joe Hendry in a bout that had decent reaction from the crowd but subpar wrestling he defeats Joe Hendry by pinfall after hitting a diving leg drop from the top rope uh, in 10 minutes 51 seconds not a bad match there the match got the crowd hot a good way to start the show 33 uh, in main performance there for Sean Defy and a 25 for Joe Hendry and we end that story down there Defy's vengeance comes to an end there as he finally wins a feud here and wins two matches in a row uh, so yep I'm happy enough to end it there and uh, maybe move Defy forward now in his career uh, as well as Joe Hendry of course who uh, that loss will not do much against him I assure you but anyway, we go on to the next match here as it's the tag team bout uh, for the titles. In a decent match, the Bollywood boys successfully defend their tag team titles for a second time against Black Hole Slasher. And uh, just under 15 minutes when Harv Shearer defeats Cremator Von Slasher by pinfall. Uh, 44 in-man performance there by Harv Shearer. 39 for Gerv Shearer. A 28 there for Steve Backer and a 22 for Creator Von Slasher, uh, who was really who seemed off his game unfortunately, but he is improving in both his technical and performance skills. So hopefully he continues to improve. 38 uh, related segment there overall, so not too bad. I'm happy enough with that. Now we go on to the next segment here as Brian Cage issues an open challenge to anybody who wants to come out and face him one on one. Uh, 34 with that segment and Billy Swear answers that challenge. So we go into the next segment here where Billy Swear goes up against Brian Cage in that match uh, that only the last uh, five and a quarter minutes. Uh, as in five minutes 13 seconds, Brian Cage defeats Billy Swear with a discus lariat, allowing him to get the pinfall. Well, uh, I should say, with by pinfall, uh, and after he had a discus lariat. 64 in-man performance there by Brian Cage, and a 20 for Billy Swear. Uh, he is not improving though, which is a shame, but anyway. For the Reddit uh, match there. For the Reddit segment, not too bad. 
which then brings us to our final match of the evening I know that there was not much angles in this one but I just decided to focus mainly on the matches as I usually do and about to had fantastic heat and great wrestling that's fantastic to say to, to see uh, Kyle O'Reilly goes over on Eddie Kingston in 23 minutes 20 seconds by pinfall after he hits a brain buster Kyle O'Reilly makes defence number 2 of his generation championship against Eddie Kingston here uh, the match is a bit colour commentary the match got the crowd hotter uh, 70 uh, inman performance up by Kyle O'Reilly and a 45 by Eddie Kingston so Kyle O'Reilly carries this one big time but Eddie Kingston uh, does pretty well himself who is and he's also improving in his performance goals so that is good to see a 51 rated match of that uh, segment there so that's not bad there but then we eh, holy shit <laughs> you need five with it holy fuck we end the show with Kyle O'Reilly celebrating in the ring with his title uh, that's fucking amazing Kyle O'Reilly's the man isn't he oh fuck so good end that show anyway uh, with a 50 uh, rated show there uh, I must check to see what our best show has been so far. That is a contender, definitely. So let's go ahead and make a speech here. Kyle O'Reilly, as usual. Brian Cage also. And we'll go with... Uh, you know what, let's go for Eddie Kingston. So you are awesome. Uh, Please for a great performance. And praise for a great performance as well. Why not make that speech? Kyle O'Reilly was very happy, uh, as was Brian Cage, and Eddie Kingston was only pleased with it, the speech. So that's a very, very good show there, uh, I have to say. Very short show, uh, we went through it pretty fast there. Uh, but regardless, we will have to have a look at our importance soon. Uh, we'll have a look at that now and see if it's went back up. I hope it has. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, we, we just can't afford to, you know, do a show every month. You know, uh, it, it is unfortunate. Uh, I, I do want to do a show in September, in August, sorry, again, and maybe even in September. I, I definitely want to do a show in September. But I would also like to do one in August, so if we can maybe do a cheap issue then, uh, that would be okay if we could get away with maybe, you know, two and a half grand uh, paying for workers' wages, not including our referee and, uh, you know, road agent on top of that. But here we go, let's have a look here. Okay, so we're on, okay, we spent a wee bit more money than what I thought we had, but uh, I I'm not going to be too disappointed at that. Uh, hopefully we build all that up by the time we get to the next month anyway. Time to heal Brown Cage is filling the vote. Joe Hendry booking campaign. Yep. I will give you better booking soon enough. Don't worry. Joe Hendry, you will be pushed more. Uh, 3.6 thousand people watched that show. That is great. Uh, so... Yeah, our best show has been the Generation Wrestling Emergence show. The second one that was, of course, the 2018 one. And then second best one was Generation Wrestling 9. So Generation Wrestling 10 won't be as big as what I thought it would have been, I don't think. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it will. Maybe we will skip it a month. I don't know. Uh, size, okay, importance is back up to 11. So, yeah. I'll do my best to put on a cheap show, uh, and maybe we won't call it Generation Wrestling 10 just so as then I can, you know, do something better for it. And we are improving as usual. This is fantastic to see. I'm happy to see the pop go up. Uh, so yeah, well, that's good to see. I do want to have a quick look here at potential broadcasters. I know that you know the likelihood of being given of getting another broadcasting deal it's very very uh, slim but uh, it's always good to you know keep on checking anyway uh, you know just in case just in case uh, uh, still don't want any 
more wrestling companies in the lineup. Really, this is the one that I want to go for the subscriptions, but very small. Uh, okay, and what about you, Stream Premium? Okay, fair enough. Uh, I would like to be able to make a TV show at some point. That that's the goal at the minute. Although, no, well, the goal is to become a small company and be able to get better broadcasting deals. But I would like to be able to become a, sm a uh, broadcaster at some point. I think that would be quite nice. Uh, sorry, a, to have a TV show at some point and then do, you know, pay per views. That would be very nice indeed. Let's have a look at our company wars and see how we're doing there. I would like to bring Alan Cole back into the equation at some point, but the only thing about that is, uh, for the second one, uh, that's not bad. The, the only thing about that is, though, is uh, he's so much money. He costs so much money. Like, let's have a look at what we'll pick. What we ah, oh, as you see, like that's eighteen hundred. Like, I can't afford that. I'm going to keep one on the books for now anyway, but uh, so as if we do, you know, grow in size, we can bring them back at some point. But as for now, like, we just can't afford that. Like, even fucking Kyle O'Reilly, look at that, 1400 we're, we're paying him a show. And, you know, that's just, that's so much money, you know. Uh, that That's, you know, two or three or even four, you know, wages there uh, for... You know, workers' wages, uh, in in terms of you know quantity of workers, so that's just that's so much money. Um, what about Eddie Kingston? How much are we paying him at the minute? Eight oh five. It's a lot of money, but uh, we can get away with that. Scotty Mark even is quite a bit of money. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Right, anyway, uh, what else do we have to look at here? Can we get a figurehead yet? What about Kyle Reilly? Can he be a figurehead yet? Mm, I don't think we can, just yet. I need to check something in my product. I'm pretty sure we don't have a Disprotect. Oh, we do have a Defied. Okay, we do have a Defied. I I thought that I selected no divide, but anyway, uh, so obviously I just forgot about that divide over the last few days because I haven't played a save in a few days, so yeah. Um, let's have a look. Finances, holy shit, that's a lot of sponsorship money. We're getting in a lot of money from sponsorships. Hopefully, that just keeps on growing and growing and growing because that's. You know, that's, that's the aim right now but as for now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to schedule Generation Wrestling uh, 10 I think for next month and if we can't do it next month instead what I'll do is I'll just do it you know I'll see if we can still put on a show like a cheaper show and we will do that but if we still can't do that, then I'll just do it for September, and then we'll have to take the month off bef uh, in October, and then we'll do uh, of obviously the Canadian Cup in November. So Sunday week two of August, a Generation Wrestling ten, and if not, then we will do Generation Wrestling something, but we'll call it something different. Uh, just so as it's not Generation Wrestling 10, because, you know, this is sort of series of events that we've got going on here. I want the 10th one to be uh, quite big, because, you know, it should be. It's, yeah, it's the 10th of a series of events, you know, so, yeah. Save and exit, close that. Uh, and, yeah.
and I think uh, let's have a look here. Okay, the prestige that tail is went back down, unfortunately. But I guess that's just because it hasn't been defended. No, it was defended. It's just after being defended. I don't know why that has happened then. Uh, but anyway. Okay, the prestige of those titles have went up, which is good to see. Uh, Canadian Cup prestige will go up at some point, but uh, it's let's uh, it's going to check something. Man, I can't remember what it was going to check. Um, I'm I'm bad for that. I always end up forgetting stuff. Nope, that's not it. I honestly can't remember what I was going to check there. Uh, what was it in? It might remind me. Uh, generation, no. Oh, yep, I remember now. Lost the Bang Cage. 907 per show. I think we can get away with that for now anyway. I'm happy enough to pay that. King of Yukon, I uh, definitely want to use him more. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Nelson Creed, somebody who I'd like to be able to use more, but he's just not really a great wrestler, sure he's not. But uh, I guess we can kind of expect that from, you know, a local talent like this, uh, popularity. Hey, yeah, he's over. He is over. Oh, wait, no, that is kind of that as well. Yeah, he's not very over, but as for us, he's over enough. And that's all that matters, I guess. Uh, Joe Hendry. Look at your pop. 17. Over enough. What the? F yep. Watching some TV, uh, some Netflix as well. I don't mean to do that. Uh... In the UK, well, oh, that was the UK there. He's not very often in the UK. Let me have a look at you. He is not very often in the UK. Uh, popularity. Like, fair enough he hasn't been in the UK, because I don't think that he works for anyone else. No, he only works for us. And uh, the only reason why I knew that is because he uh, relocated it and he is now living in Canada. So that's the only reason why I really knew that he, he was only working for us, but I wanted to double check just in case. You see, yeah, you see that uh, based in British Columbia. So he's definitely somebody who I would like to uh, see about using a bit more of. Uh, just because, you know, he's obviously focus on the company and he's not that expensive 450 a show for somebody who uh, who really has pretty decent skills and can pull off a pretty damn good match uh, for our standards anyway for the standards of a local company you know he's not bad but anyway that's going to end it there uh, let's go ahead and stop that recording thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again bye